God has blessed us with another beautiful day. Say it with me, Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Remember with me our duty today. Hebrews 3 and verse 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin. Remember our definitions of sin. That's very important for today's devotion. Everyone who sins is breaking God's law, for all sin is contrary to the law of God, 1 John 3 and verse 4. So, uh, sin is doing what God says not to do. Uh, Also remember, uh, therefore one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin, James 4 and verse 17. So sin is knowing the right thing to do, and just not doing it. So we can sin by doing, we can sin by not doing. And then passages like Romans 14 and verse 23 say, whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. So if I'm convinced in my mind that a thing is wrong, and yet I allow myself to violate my conscience and go ahead and do a thing, even though I still believe it's wrong, uh, I have committed sin. So. Uh, those are some specific ways that we sin, and um, the, the definitions of sin. But we've been talking about how that plays out in our life uh, in many instances. And today I want us to uh, consider the fact that sin is always wrong, sin is always sin. Uh, even if I think I can point to someone else and say, what I did is not as bad as what they did. Um, I, th- throughout what we discuss right now, I want you to keep letting your mind go back to those passages that we just read and what sin is. In those definitions, uh, 1 John 3 and verse 4, James 4, 17, Romans 14, 23, Keep thinking about those. Now, as you are letting those go around your mind, do you remember anything in those passages about degrees of sin? Sin is uh, a barrier. I mean, it's, it's where we transgress God's law. It's where we fail to live up to God's law. It's where we, uh, use our, we, we misuse our conscience it, it, it all references God's righteousness. It doesn't reference anyone else. So that's what I want you to think about when we uh, think about this excuse, what I did is not as bad as what they did, as trying to be a way that we can justify ourselves. We just cannot do it. <clears throat> there, aren't, there are not uh, outlined for us in the New Testament degrees of sin. Whatever the truth may be on that subject, if there are degrees of sin, and I know there's a a passage of Scripture that talks about one who's worthy of being uh, beaten of many stripes compared to one uh, who is worthy of being being beaten uh, of few stripes. Uh, Whatever the truth is on the matter of degrees of sin, uh, I would challenge you to look through the entire New Testament and try to find places where it says this sin is worse than this one. Um, on, only one exception do I know, and I'll bring that up at the end of the devotion here. But other than that, all sin that's mentioned in the New Testament uh, really is in the same level playing field because they all will condemn us if we do not repent of them and receive forgiveness by the blood of Jesus. In Romans chapter 1, Really, the, the first two chapters of Romans, and I may be oversimplifying this, but to me, Romans chapter 1 speaks much more about uh, the sin of the Gentiles, whereas chapter 2 uh, seems to be much more directed toward the Jews who would excuse themselves. Uh, but uh, in Romans chapter 1, and in verse 28, uh, he says regarding those that um, they... They refuse to recognize God as God. They refuse to submit to God as the ruler. Uh, That's anybody that does that. He says in verse 28, 
Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Now, in, in reading that list, did you hear anything that said this is worse than this? I didn't. The only thing that I heard really that shows how bad this is, is they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. You know, that's really what I see from a lot of people that are not submitting to God. They just simply don't want to. It may not be that down deep they don't believe there's a God. It may not be that down deep they don't believe the Bible is God's Word. But they just don't want to be told what to do. Hey, I, you know, I get that. I don't really like to be told what to do either. But you know, if I was on an airplane uh, that was about to crash and I had directions from the control tower that told me what to do to save myself on that plane and rather than die in a fiery ball uh, of jet fuel, I think I could make myself stop and listen to, and be told what to do, don't you? Well, I'm telling you this planet is destined for a fiery ball and God is telling us what to do, and you can like it, not like it, whatever. You ought to be thankful for it. I should be thankful for it, that God's telling me what to do, and God tells me not to be wicked. God tells me not to covet. God tells me not to have a malicious spirit, and so on and so forth. And, and these folks simply did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Don't tell me what to do. I want to live myself my way. Well, every one of those sins is equal to the other. There's not one that's greater than the other because all are, look, not, it, it just exemplifies the fact that I am unwilling to submit to God and let Him rule my life. Now, there's another passage of Scripture that to me shows the folly of this argument of, uh, yeah, well, I, I may have done this, but they did something worse. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul really, uh, uh, th this falls in a section of uh, 2 Corinthians, especially, uh, I think, chapters 8 and forward, where Paul is really having to defend the fact that he's an apostle. Because the Corinthians, who should have recognized that, were allowing other people to to, to take the role of teachers and, and roles of authority and doubting the fact that Paul was an apostle. When he had been there, he had shown them the, the works of an apostle. And so as he's writing this in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter um, 10, uh, I want you to notice in uh, verse 12, 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 12, Paul says, we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. Now listen to this. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. You know, if you were getting together with some folks and you wanted to build a building, say you want to build a shed, and you tell a fella, hey, I need a board over here that's 32 inches long. And the guy brings you a board, and he's got it on his shoulder, and you can see it reaches from way over there to way over there, and he says, here's your board. You say, I need a board 32 inches. He says, yeah, this is 32 inches. He says, I, you know, I, I've got my own ruler, and my ruler says 32 inches. That's not going to work, is it? We've all got to have the same standard and Paul says these people are foolish because when they want to look at their lives 
in a quantitative way. They want to say, here's what I'm worth or here's how I'm approved. All they do is just look around at other people. They look at other people. And he says, they're not wise. You know other, another way of saying that's not wise? They're foolish. Uh, one translation I was reading, it says they are ignorant and unlearned. They don't know. So uh, we don't compare ourselves with others when it comes to righteousness. There's only one standard of rule, and that's God's Word. And if you're going to look at any life, it would have to be the life of Jesus. So think about the progression with me. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So who are sinners? I am. You are. We have all sinned. And it seems like daily we fail, we give in to temptation, and we sin. We need a way out. What's the depth of our sin? Romans 6 and verse 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The wages of sin is death. Now, all of us have sinned. The wages of sin is death. That means all of us are doomed to die unless we have a way out, and that way is Jesus Christ. Now, I mentioned earlier there's only one uh, exception to this, to me, really, and that's in Romans 12 and verse 32, or pardon me, Matthew chapter 12 and verse 32. Now, in, in this passage, Jesus has cast out demons, and the Pharisees, having to admit that something happened, they cast doubt on the source of Jesus' power. And so they say uh, that um, the Pharisees in verse 24 said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. So they took the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus harnessed to cast out demons. And they attributed that to the devil, basically, the, the ruler of demons. So Jesus says in Matthew 12 and verse 32, Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, that's himself, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. If you deny the very power that was used to cast out a spirit, there is no forgiveness for that. There, when you're taking the power of God and saying that's the devil's power, there is no power that can save you. And so uh, we need to all just say, God's word is my rule. This is how I need to judge my life. Just like if you're going to cut a board, what, are you, what would you do? Would you start hunting sticks and, and say, I'll, I'll make it the same size as a stick? This board looks like this board. No, you get a ruler. We have a ruler. Let's judge our lives by this rule. Don't look at others. What I'm doing is not as bad. You know, I've even had people decline invitations to come worship by saying, "Why? Well, you know, my life is just as good as some of the folks that you worship with. That's not, that's not how we judge our lives. We don't judge them based on the lives of others. We judge our lives based on the nice medium of the Word of God that never changes. It's always consistent. It's impartial. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, black or white, slave or free. It doesn't, nothing matters. This Word judges us all the same. Let's ask God to be honest about our lives. Holy Father, thank you for this day. And as we begin our day, we pray that you'll help us to look not around us to judge our lives, but Look at the mirror of your word. Help us to all be honest. We can know ourselves. We can know what our character truly is. And let us judge that in light of your word, not by looking at others. We're so thankful for your son and for the, the, the wonderful, flawless life that he lived while on this earth. We're so thankful for the Holy Spirit that was demonstrated so mightily while he was here and while your apostles were here and that wrote that, that guided men to write these words in the Bible and you have preserved them for us. Help us to look to your word and judge our lives based on it. And Father, when we find that we are in error, help us to make correction immediately and turn to you. Thank you for being so merciful and gracious for promising to forgive our sins when we turn to you. Help us to do that as individuals. Help us to do that 
as, a, as congregations, help us to do it as communities, and Father, please help us to do that as a nation. Watch over us today, keep us safe, and may we be a good example to all that we're around when you're finished with us here. May we come to be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Use this standard. Don't look around. Look in to the Word of God. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.